Hello, everyone. So just a short introduction. My name is Sanj Poshitek from Warsaw in Poland, and I'm stoked to be here even more when I learned about the badge that is going to be uh, well, given to all those uh, contributors in October. So anyways, uh, just in short words, I'm really love. I really love to work with my platform. I do it for over four years. Uh, I do couple of lots, I mean, lots of things around uh, contributions like video recordings, blog posting. So if you'd like to, to connect with me and follow what I'm doing, then here are some hyperlinks. Uh, just navigate to to any of them and uh, I can take take it from there. So if you'd like to ask me questions now or after the, the even well, this uh, the call, then feel free to reach out to me. All right. So I'm going to talk uh, about the um, advanced scenarios in Power Platform approvals. And the first thing that uh, we need to, to know is that um, the built-in Power Platform approvals, the Power Automate approvals that we can use in Microsoft Teams as well, they are uh, working on Dataverse, of course, and there are a couple of tables which are taking part in the approvals. And by telling you this, uh, I want to show you some scenarios that you cannot simply um, achieve by using the out-of-box functionalities. And so, first of all, there is the main table that is called approval, which is um, storing like a header of the approval. So the information for the title, description, who has created it. And after the approval is completed, uh, what was the outcome? Uh, then the approval request is a table that uh, stores information about every single task generated during the approval process, together with information to whom it is assigned, of course. Then the approval response uh, is storing information about every single completed task. So information about who completed it um, and what was the outcome and what was the comment. Now, then the user table is used to um, combine all these tables together because uh, it has to map the AAD uh, information to uh, the diverse information about the users. And the flow approval table is the most important one in terms of those custom scenarios because it holds information about um, every single action in every instance of a flow that contains an action related to approval. So if you have a flow that has uh, start and wait for an approval, it will contain just one, one entry in the flow approval table. If you have two actions like start an approval and then wait for an approval, then it will contain these two rows here as well. And then one of the important, the most important things, one of the most important uh, data which is stored in flow approval is a um, flow notification URI column that uh, once you post a, a JSON, whatever post request to that flow notification URI, it will resume the flow that is waiting for that approval to be completed. And so, and speaking about uh, the scenarios uh, that we're going through, you have to be aware that first approvals are environment related, so that there is no like a general storage for all approvals in all the environments you have. They are stored in data versus mentioned, therefore they're really environment related. And furthermore, those actions which are waiting for the approval to be completed, uh, both speaking about uh, power automate, uh, like wait for an approval and wait for like adaptive cut to be uh, response from the adaptive cut, they only wait 30 days. So, but it doesn't mean that the approval data is removed from the dataverse. No, it's not. And therefore, uh, what I will be showing you can as well be used to create some really long running um, workflows, which can even take like years to be completed. So there are a couple of scenarios, like when the task is created, um, Power Automate is writing um, to two tables, so into approval and approval requests, some specific information. Then in terms of the completion, then the um, information is stored in approval responses, so all those information about uh, completed tasks and in approval a table, uh, it updates the record with outcome and uh, and daytime uh, information and some statuses as well. Then speaking about the reassignment, the only uh, things that are happening are happening within the approval request tables, like one task is being deactivated, the other one task is being created, um, record is being deactivated, the other one is activated, is created. And when speaking about the reassignment and uh, what we can do out of box, there are like principles which Power Automate is following, or maybe the current uh, approvals API. So first, uh, user cannot reassign a task which is not assigned to themselves. So you cannot reassign others, others assignees tasks. Uh, also, you cannot reassign a task yourself. Why would you? <laughs> and you can't reassign a task to the, uh, to the initiator, so to the person who started the approval process. Uh, but what I will be showing you uh, can be overcome. I mean, those principles can be can be uh, overcome with the uh, custom custom um, actions that you can do on the approvals table, obviously. And lastly, uh, when a task is cancelled, uh, then the original information uh, is updated again in approvals table uh, with the outcome that is cancelled and the result that is cancelled. And so that's it. 
It's not thank you. Uh, it's just that I will be now jump over to demos because they are way more interesting. So first, uh, first information, I have like a couple of flows running here uh, which have uh, already assigned tasks. Um, and they're quite simple. They're just assigning a task, generating me um, or returning me this task uh, approval uh, ID, which I need to grab for the future scenarios. Um, this first task or this first workflow, uh, I will just show you how you can complete any running approval. Uh, like no matter if it is already completed or, well, it has to, sorry, whether it's uh, waiting for one approval or whether it's waiting for 10 approvals. Um, the point is uh, about the approvals uh, also important is the fact that if you choose the approve reject, everyone must approve. It will be waiting either for the first rejection or first approve or, or all the approvals. Uh, if you choose the approve reject, uh, everyone must approve, but custom responses, then it will be always waiting for everyone who is assigned a task to complete their task. And this might be a bottleneck in many scenarios. Just imagine if someone is uh, on holidays or is on a sick leave and they just cannot complete their tasks. But on the other hand, you are not able to reassign these tasks or let others to complete these tasks. So what I will be showing you is to help you create those um, really advanced uh, approvals that can uh, that can handle such scenarios. So right now I'll navigate to uh, the workflow which is going to complete any approval. Its mechanism is quite simple. I mean, it is and it is not. Uh, the very deep details are on my YouTube channel if you'd like to, to follow um, and to get into details. So first of all, the workflow is taking information about the approval itself, about all the assigned tasks, and information about the tasks which are, are already completed. So like if I go now to list of my assigned tasks and I will just complete one of these which are assigned in this approval process. Um, oh. There is no. So maybe I'll go to another user who should have that task assigned to him. Uh, oh, there it is. So he'll complete. Yep, and that's done. It's done. Yes, it's done. So, in, anyways, <clears throat> this flow is now uh, will take us for information about the completed tasks, and then it is reaching out to the table to get the flow approval uh, to, into the flow approvals table to get the information about the flow notification URI. Now, what I found out is that if you have the same scenario as I do have, so that you have like two actions: one is assigning an approval, the second one is waiting. There are two records. Although only the first one, so the, for the first action, is having the same GUID as the approval. The other one is not having the same GUID, but is having the same sequence ID. Uh, so uh, it's called the flow sequence ID. And therefore, if after trying to get the flow notification URI with the first attempt, with the first action, uh, using the uh, approval ID, I am getting nothing so that the flow notification URI is empty. I'm doing the second call to check if there is a flow notification URI available for the flow run sequence ID uh, that I was able to obtain from the first call. And that's just the most maybe cumbersome uh, piece. Uh, there is as well here in that um, part of going through the approval responses, uh, some logic because um, I'm just building the request body that is going to be sent to the flow notification URI and that request body is following simply the schema of the JSON which the action wait for an approval is expecting so that this if the schema is, is matching then the response will be turned into those dynamic outcomes and you will be simply able to use them in, in next actions in your Cloudflow. And so finally after all this uh, data is obtained the flow is marking the existing approval as completed then is building the request body uh, that is in the end going to be sent to this flow notification URI. So just let me show you how um, this can be done. I'll now trigger this workflow by providing that flow um, uh, by that approval ID. And here we go. So, oh, and by the way, this um, request body that you are sending to flow notification URI, it can be literally anything. It just has to be a valid JSON. And it is being returned one to one uh, through the uh, action is waiting. So if I say now approve, then this outcome is going to be stored uh, in Dataverse and it will be as well returned by the action which is now waiting. So let me navigate here 
you see now the information is that if my flow runs successfully and when I go through uh, the outcomes, uh, I can see that there is my outcome just wrote, written, uh, the response summary because general researcher has already approved their task and there were no other responses. And even though that the approval was waiting for like three responses or the first rejection, it is already completed. Um, the second scenario I wanted to show you um, before before I move on to the third one, if I still have time, is the reassignment because one of, one of those things I find the most important when are we, when speaking about the workflows is that whenever we have that approval um, process waiting for multiple assignees for their responses, we really can, as mentioned before, we really can very easily uh, find ourselves in like in a bottleneck. I mean, the process can can meet that bottleneck because some of these approvers are simply unavailable uh, at the moment. They are requested or they just uh, want to spend some more time on doing whatever. And we might first think that, OK, so if that person is not available, maybe we can reassign this task to someone else. Or you would like to create an automated process, which is just um, working on substitutions so that it's running like daily and it's checking um, the absences list and then is uh, reassigning tasks to, to other, I mean, to substitutes. Or maybe uh, we just want to reassign that task to ourselves because uh, we want this workflow to be completed fast and we know that those assignees will just procrastinate for whatever weeks. So anyways, uh, the reassignment task works this way that um, it is obtaining or getting the information about the current assignee uh, and the new assignee. Uh, it is as well getting information about the existing task details because in the end it has to create a new entry in approval requests uh, table that simply looks up uh, looks up the existing uh, approval request. And once this new approval is created, when this new entry is created with the new assignee, then the existing one is simply set to uh, reassigned stage complete and status inactive. So now once I hit and test it, uh, I as well need to navigate back to another example. I think it was that one. This task, uh, yes, it's reassigned task. You see this assigned just to two employees. So like John Researcher doesn't have this task uh, assigned. And now I'll get the approval ID and where was that here? I think yeah, it was here. So I want to reassign my task to John and run it. So just to show you, um, I have this reassigned task present. Meanwhile, John, well, John has, but it's uh, the old one, so I can simply cancel it. Uh, and it will not, it will not, uh, sorry, not cancel, but uh, reject it, but it will not terminate the workflow here, right? So the workflow is still running. So it means that it wasn't that instance. Uh, the instance uh, this task was coming from was terminated or canceled before. So still the workflow is, is waiting. Uh, and this task that I have here assigned, so just note 33 minutes ago, and I'll refresh and I should not see it, right? So it's gone from my list. However, when I switch to John's list of tasks and now refresh his, you'll see that um, right here, this task now appeared. So now if I uh, reject it here, whatever, I'm not very creative, it will now complete the, uh, the workflow, this workflow, yep because it is set to wait for either or approvals or first rejection. So in that case, um, the outcome is reject because John to whom it was reassigned decided to reject the task. Okay, so, all right. So, I mean, the last example I would like to show you was uh, about how to create uh, this kind of scenario where you have a workflow running and you have it assigned like five assignees or 10 assignees, but you want to complete it after a specific quota of, of, of uh, responses is met. Um, that is the same as we used to have in SharePoint workflows, design, SharePoint design workflows, so that you really need to wait just for the specific percentage of approvals to be collected. And that is basically following the same scenario or the same steps as I showed you in the first example. The only difference is that I as well have a table uh, well, that in this scenario is used to, uh, to store information about what is the percentage of, of tasks uh, that has to be that has to be uh, made so that the whole approval is collected. And then you can imagine that uh, there is a workflow 
which is being triggered every time there is a change that is happening inside the approval responses table. And it's simply checking if the number of responses to that specific approval, approval process is already equal or above the defined quota. And then if it is above the quota or equal or above, then it is simply following the same scenario as in the first example. So it is just completing the workflow by posting the uh, request body collected from the approval responses table with all the details of all the, of all the given responses uh, and is marking the approval as a completed one. So I'll just not go through the details and with the demo. Thank you very much for, for this uh, opportunity to showcase this. Uh, and I really think this has a very much uh, of the potential unless we are given some cool approvals API that we can that we can just do it out of box, what I'm showing you. Uh, as long as there is no such API, then, uh, well, you need to have premium licenses and, and take it from here. So if you have any questions, I'll be here on the chat to answer them for you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, Thomas. Yeah, a lot of information here, folks. We put uh, Thomas has done a lot of videos as well, so you'll find that link in the chat. Don't hesitate to take a look there, and we'll have him back again uh, to talk a little bit more about it. Thank you.